What is up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Uber Cold Garage. On this week's episode, uh, if you saw the thumbnail, we are installing electric power steering into the bug. So I found out about this a couple months ago and kind of have been doing research. Uh, finally pulled the trigger on a 2004 to 2009 uh, Toyota Prius electric power steering. Uh, one of the reasons I went with this system was, uh, it is a column mounted power steering electric. Uh, so no power steering pump hooked up to the motor, no long lines, no reservoirs, no nothing, uh, plugs directly into the battery. Uh, and on top of that, it is completely a hundred percent silent, which is kind of a big thing for me. Uh, wouldn't ever know that it has power steering until uh, you actually try to turn the wheel. So it was one of those things that it wasn't 100% necessary to do. Uh, the car was drivable the way that it was before, but with this system that I got now, uh, it is absolutely ridiculous. So we'll go ahead and hop into that. Uh, if you guys will probably notice in this video, I have upgraded uh, my phone. So now I am filming with a iPhone 15. So hopefully video content or video stuff is a lot better in the next couple videos. Um, still kind of tweaking with it and working with it. So hopefully it gets better as time goes on uh so let's go ahead and hop into this video hope you guys enjoy a lot has been going on with the car uh as you can see i have spaghetti wires everywhere uh decided to not really rewire the car but finish wiring the car slash making sure everything functions so I uh, went ahead and kind of pulled apart some of the front loom just to try and get every single thing sorted. Uh, as you can see, I have the fuel tank out, the ice box out, the steering column out. And you might be wondering why I have the steering column out. Uh, we'll get to that in the next clip. I'm pretty darn excited about it. Should be a really cool project and completely change the whole feel of the car. So uh, I've kind of saved you guys from the majority of the boring wiring stuff. Uh, I know you guys or some of you guys probably want to see the wiring stuff. I'll kind of give a rundown on what's going on with everything. Uh, I'm adding a ton of sensors uh, flex fuel, boost control, uh, all kinds of different stuff, wheel speed sensors. So I'm getting all of that stuff sorted out, uh, as well as unlocking a bunch of stuff inside the computer, uh, to get the car to do a whole bunch of different other things. Uh, you know, traction control, all of that cool little stuff that comes along with all of it. Uh, especially with the wheel speed sensors. So we got everything torn apart. A uh, couple things needed to happen up front here besides what's going in right now. Uh, I have to remake this brake line here. Uh, the flare fitting cracked the last time I put it in, so I haven't been able to actually bleed the brakes. I've has a tiny bit of pressure, but that's it. So uh, definitely have to remake that. One of the biggest pet peeves is the master cylinders down here at the bottom. They are almost impossible to get fluid into, uh, especially bleeding the brakes. I have to like set a canister over there and then pump it in with a, uh, I've been using a transmission uh fill pump to fill the brakes brake fluid and the clutch 
fluid. So I am going to make a box that sits up here with two fill ports on it and then run AN lines down to the actual master cylinders down there. That way I can just fill them up top. So that's another huge project that I have to kind of sort and get done right now. But let's hop into the exciting thing that's uh, going on with the steering column. Well, here is the exciting thing with the steering column. Uh, this is a 2004 to 2009 Toyota Prius electric power steering. So the bug is going to get power steering. Yes, it is drivable the way that it is. Uh, with the tires being so wide up front, it is a little difficult to steer. Uh, just in parking lots and stuff like that. So we're going to adapt this into the steering column. So there's no, the cool thing about this is this is a column power steering setup. There's no power steering rack. There's no power steering fluid. There's no nothing. So this just plugs into the battery and into an ignition switch and it kicks on. I already went through Bench tested this, make sure this one worked. Uh, ended up just ordering one off of eBay. So this will be pretty cool. Uh, my biggest problem at the moment is the shaft, as you can see, is too long. So we're going to go ahead and tear this section apart. We'll probably cut right here. And we got to adapt the spline joints i'm probably going to uh cut the shaft and just weld in different pieces so this is the computer for this i have something in the mail that is going to completely change this that is super awesome uh it's coming from overseas so it took a little bit longer to get here than what i wanted but it should be here this week. So that's another really cool feature about this uh, that I'll get into more once I have it here. But uh, let's go ahead and get this thing kind of taken apart a little bit and see how we can fit it in the car. You just saw me take this kind of halfway apart. Uh, so there is a shaft that slides over these splines here. Uh, it's a much larger shaft. I am going to go ahead and delete that. So that stuck out about yay far. I need to cut this back here. Uh, so this sleeve here, there's a bearing down in the bottom there. So I gave myself enough clearance there. So I'll cut this off, put this back together, and then see exactly where I need to cut this shaft here. Uh, what I'm gonna end up doing is take my U-joint here, slide that down onto wherever I need it, and I think I'm probably just going to through bolt it. I'll drill a hole all the way directly through that one go all the way through and then put a bolt through it. That way I can disconnect this U-joint if the U-joint ever goes bad or uh, or if the motor goes bad. So that way that section there will be removable. It'll be removed from the actual steering column into the car from there as well. Uh, I do need to order a, they make a straight coupler for this end here so straight coupler to a seven i believe it's a seven eighths uh straight shaft 
and then I'll weld that straight shaft to uh, this one right here. So I'll cut this one off wherever it ends up being. I'll slide that coupler in there, weld that all the way around. That way this unbolts from the actual steering rack and uh, this one will actually unbolt from the power steering pump itself. So I was almost thinking about trying to figure out a way to make this spline work on this. So I might end up trying to figure something out with that. Uh, if it does, awesome. If not, then uh, what I was thinking with the through bolt will definitely work as well. So we'll uh, go ahead and I'll get that cut off and then I'll kind of set it in here and kind of show you what uh, the idea is on mounting it and all of that. So let's uh, cut that off and then we'll do that. Said I was going to show you guys how got it all positioned. So got the U-joints there. Uh, went ahead and cut the shaft way farther back. Uh, it's got a through bolt there now. Uh, cut the outer shaft off. And then I still haven't got uh, my sleeve yet. So uh, I just have this one temporarily in there uh so that just goes straight through it basically replaced half of what uh i already had in there so my original bracket that was holding the column itself uh is now going to it is really hard to get angles on all this so there's a couple bolt bolt holes and stuff that go into this where the original mount on it went. So basically I'm gonna make a plate that surrounds all of that, catches all three of those points, and then we'll bolt up into that original point. Uh, I might actually even bring one up and bolt it up into that gusset just to give it a little bit more strength, that way it doesn't go anywhere. But as soon as I get that U-joint in there, or it's not even a U-joint, it's, it's a coupling, but it's spline-specific to the Prius power steering. So it's a weld-in joint, so it'll weld to that actual shaft, and then it splines into the uh, Toyota Prius power steering pump. So that'll work pretty good. Uh, after I get that, hopefully tomorrow, uh, I can get that welded in and then I can start making the bracket. But uh, in the meantime, I got the other really cool part to this. So when you take the power steering pump out or power steering unit out of a Prius, uh, it goes into a limp mode without the actual factory ECU. So it puts it, I believe it, it, it makes it so then it thinks that it's doing 41 miles an hour. So it still gives you power steering, but not the correct power steering. So yeah, it would work. But uh, I went ahead and ordered this controller. So this plugs directly into the ECU of the power steering so that plug right there plugs directly into it uh you got a power and a ground and then you have a dial knob so i'll have a dial knob that i can fully adjust the power steering from nothing to full power steering uh this will go into the center console with all the rest of my buttons and everything. And that'll get wired into the entire system. So it should be really cool. Uh, if another thing that you notice, 
there's no uh, ECU box for this. So I ended up uh, extending the entire harness and bringing it into the car because I realized that that computer is not uh, watertight. So didn't want to leave it out here in the elements. So I am welding up a bracket. That way it mounts to the underside of the battery box. That way it's tucked out of the way. Uh, easy to get to if something happens. But extended the harness. That way that's all nice and dry and secure. And then we'll get this wired in. And hopefully I can show you guys how this thing works. got that bracket cut out uh, and then of course you know I ended up messing up the bend so I had to cut the top of the bracket off uh, readjust it got it bolted in there right now uh, also welded in the adapter piece so that's all done uh, I kind of wiggled the steering wheel around a little bit noticed that the actual power steering was shifting back and forth so I just made this bracket here uh, just a quick tack welded it together kind of bracket uh, I'm gonna have to change it because uh, it interferes with where the ice box sits so I'm probably gonna go with a heavier rod down to this bolt down here and then come off of this rod lower down to this bracket. Uh, with this just tacked in, the uh, actual unit itself does not move at all. So let me show you guys how ridiculous this is. So this is temporary. You got temporary power hooked up there. So this is basically the way that it was don't mind the mess in the car. Uh, so, I mean, it is very, very hard to steer. So, if I come in here and tag that wire in. So, it clicked real quick. This is on the lowest setting that... Um, that adjuster has you can see that it is completely effortless it is I mean I can turn the wheel with one finger so that's just with it on the lowest setting it does definitely get a lot easier with the um, with the setting all the way up testing it and stuff so it works out fantastic I actually probably should have done this from the beginning but didn't even realize it was a thing until the last couple weeks probably so Technically, the I have a 1965 Volkswagen Bug with power steering. 
So I don't know if anybody else has done this kit yet, but definitely, definitely worth trying to figure out in your car because it is absolutely ridiculous. Yes, this car technically probably didn't need it, but uh, it's just really cool. So I think I might try and figure out if there is a way that I can use the computer and the wheel speed sensor to uh, turn off the power steering at a certain mile an hour, or I might just run the dial and uh, just find a setting that works great and then leave it. So super, super happy with this. We'll, uh, I'll show you guys a little bit more once I, uh, well, I'll show you making the brackets and stuff like that. And then we'll, I'll show you more once get everything kind of together and give you a better idea of how easy it is. All right, guys, so that's all I have for you on this one. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and probably finish off the bra bracketry, get that stuff painted. Uh, super ecstatic on how it works and the controller and everything works incredible. I couldn't even, it's almost cheating to me. Uh, it works almost too good. So uh, I'm going to dig into kind of the ECU stuff and see if I can control uh, the power steering with the ECU, uh, have it turn off at a certain mile an hour, maybe, or something along those lines. I'm going to dig into it a little bit more. So on the next episode, uh, I'll give you a rundown on all of the wiring that I've been doing in the bug. Uh, I'm also getting a new set of parts. I'll explain that in the next video. Um, so... I just want to try and get all of the mechanical stuff on the bug 100% situated. Uh, make sure that everything functions correctly and everything. And then I'm going to pull the body off. I'll do the body work, get it painted. Uh, we'll finish off the chassis stuff, get the rest of the chassis painted. Uh, and then we'll put it all back together. And then after that, basically minimal stuff. It'll be probably a lot of carbon carbon fiber parts uh, coming in the future. So we'll get into all that stuff uh, in the next coming videos. Just wanted to say I appreciate all of you guys that watch the videos. Uh, things in the future here pretty soon are going to start changing. Uh, I'm going to work solely on getting the shop stuff situated, start looking into getting t-shirts and stickers and all kinds of cool stuff. I'm gonna also gonna start working on getting products made uh, that way you guys can purchase. So basically my shop stuff is I'm starting to really get it serious into all of this, get it all situated. Uh, start working on all the details and all that stuff. So look forward to some products from me in the near future. So we'll, uh, I appreciate all the support and thank you guys for liking, commenting, subscribing. We'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out guys.